Hey, this is Neil, and I'm back with another Second Front and ASL video. This time I'm going to be talking about infantry fire equivalent in Second Front, hull down positioning, and unarmored targets. Let's start with infantry fire equivalent. This is a trait that some AFBs have in Advanced Squad Leader and Second Front where the vehicle does not require to uh, achieve a hit to fire on a target. So what I have here in my little playground is I have some German vehicles and a German anti-aircraft gun and some infantry, Russian infantry and uh, AFV targets. Now for the German vehicles, I have a uh, armored car, uh, 231-8 a panzer 2f and another armored car a 222l and then i have a 20 millimeter sorry yeah 20 millimeter flak 30. all of these guns have uh, 20 millimeter guns and the characteristics that most 20 millimeter guns maybe some 37 millimeter guns had at the time in world war ii was a high rate of fire and in squad leader advanced squad leader and in second front there are two modes of fire that you can use that aren't really documented um, well, visually, when these guns fire, and you'll see here in a minute, they fire, and I think I mentioned it in one of my previous videos, they, they fire with the boom, 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 boom type of attack instead of just one shot. That means it's using, it's potentially using infantry fire equivalent um, instead of the two hit process. And um, let me show you, I'm going to put right up over there, I'm going to put up the corresponding uh ASL counters for these four uh, vehicle, three vehicles and one anti-aircraft gun from Advanced Squad Leader. Now, one of the things you notice next to the main armament size, which is most of these is are 20 L's, is there's a number in parentheses. And infantry fire equivalent in ASL can range typically. It's typically four, four or six firepower. It can go higher depending if like if it's like a quad anti-aircraft gun, it could actually go above eight. It could go up to twelve, I think. Maybe even twenty. I think the Werbel Wind, which was a mobile anti-aircraft, quad anti-aircraft. I think I might have an infantry fire equivalent of twenty. It's very it's very high. Um and the number in parentheses represents the equivalent small arms firepower that you can attack a target with without having to go through the two hit process now let's go back to the vehicles here i'm going to fire this uh this 238 slash 8 armored car i'm going to fire over here at the at the uh, german or sorry the uh, russian t70 um, now if i fire i can do there's a there's a two hit process you can see it, there's aiming and i'm firing ap and there's a 2% chance, 0% chance, or 2%. But if I fire over at this infantry, there's no two kill chance. There's not even a two hit chance. There's simply a result chance. Okay. So I'm going to fire, I'm going to fire over here. I'm just going to fire. Let me change the cover arc back. I'm going to fire over here just using AP, and it's going to use a two hit, and it's going to miss. Now I'm going to fire over here, and I'm going to fire infantry fire equivalent, and it's going to be firepower, and there's no two hit process. It just fires on it. It doesn't have to hit. just fires with four firepower, as if it's a squad or a meeting machine gun um, with wheels that can drive around the battlefield. You don't have to hit things. Same with this anti-aircraft gun. I can use a two-hit process versus a vehicle using 20 millimeter shells, or I can fire infantry fire equivalent. Maybe it's might be a six firepower. Um, let's refer back to the uh, ASL counter here and see if it's six, four, or six. And then I'll just fire over here. Let this guy get rid of fire. I think I fired him twice already. This guy, I'll do two hit over here. Um, and in ASL, um, when you use infantry fire equivalent, the number in parentheses firing as a machine gun, the rate of fire, uh, is lower. 
I don't know if that's true in second front. The chance to get a reload uh, is reduced because you're it's basically simulating firing more at a target when you use infantry fire equivalent versus the two hit process firing a shell. So I don't know if the reload chance gets reduced when you fire uh, just infantry fire equivalent. Now, another thing that you need to know about these 20, 20, 20 millimeter guns that have infantry fire equivalent that fire like this and can fire on infantry without using a two hit process is when you jump into close combat with them, uh, typically, uh, and you'll see in part uh, four, this is part three, I think in part four, I'm going to talk about close combat between infantry and vehicles. The infantry fire equivalent value of a 20 millimeter vehicle gets included with any machine guns it has, it has to, to attack back at your squad. So when you go into close combat with these uh, armored cars and small light tanks that have 20 millimeter rapid firing guns, the chance of your squad or squads getting taken out in uh, close combat is higher because it'll combine, it's able to combine its uh, machine gun firepower plus the infantry fire equivalent. A tank cannot do that. You know, a big tank with 75 millimeter, it's too slow. It fires too slow. All it can use to attack back on a squad in close combat is its machine gun, typically uh, coax and anti-aircraft. Not true with these little armored cars and light tanks with uh, 20 millimeter. They can, uh, they have a good chance of killing your squad in close combat because they're able to combine that firepower. They're usually turret mounted, fast firing, able to react uh, to units in close co combat. So keep that in mind with your 20 millimeters. Use them as basically roving dual machine guns. With They may have a turret machine gun like this 222L has, and they may have a 20 millimeter infantry fire equivalent gun that's able to tear up infantry just traveling around the, uh, the battlefield. All right, let's uh, end this one, and let's go into the hold down position that AFPs can take to their advantage. All right, let's talk about hold down in AFV combat, a term not even mentioned one single time in the second front manual, but one, a concept that's critical to real life tankers called hold down status. I'm not sure they still call it hold down these days, but you can see if you watch videos on YouTube, even modern tankers, um, you know, shoot and scoot method, they'll, they'll come up over a rise, fire, and then they'll back away, trying to expose essentially as little of their AFV as possible, um, mainly mainly their turret. Uh, same concept here in AS, not ASL, second front. Um, basically what's called hull down. It's hidden in the game. You can see it here, and I'll show you, show you how it works. So I have uh, two German Panzer IVs again set up. One is kind of behind a wall. One is just uh, down the road from this uh, Sherman M4A1. And the Sherman uh, can fire. Now, which target is he going to select? At first glance, it may not seem like that much of a difference. You may think, oh, one's behind a wall. Maybe it, it, there's uh, some kind of modifier. But it's, it's way more than that. So uh, this one has a clear shot down the road, right? This one, you can see when I put the cursor over it, there are no aiming modifiers. This is boom, straight down the road at a range of, I don't know, seven, one, two, three, range of six. This one, if I put the cursor over it, you see here, I need to scroll, let me, let me do that again so you can see it better. It has uh, these two wall icons, which you would, you would expect to see for a target behind a wall. It says good cover. Okay, that's good. But if you, this is the only place you'll find where the concept of hull down comes into effect. It just says wall good cover, but if you come over to here for the chance to destroy hitting the turret or the hull, 0%. 0%. If I fire on this tank and I get a hull hit, which is about a 50-50 chance, there's zero effect. I hit the wall. 
And maybe you've seen that pop up before. There's a dialogue when you shoot. It'll say wall. That means I fired at a tank that's in hull down status and I did not get a turret hit. So not only does it add, doesn't make it hard to hit. It's not good cover. It's literally cover. Unless you get a turret hit, you can you have zero effect on a tank that's in a hull down position. So let me zoom in and take a shot at the uh, hull down Panzer IV and see if we hit the wall or if we hit the turret or don't hit anything at all. Uh, we hit the wall. So basically parking that Panzer IV behind a wall, putting it in hull down position, basically made it a 50-50 chance that absolutely nothing would happen to the tank at all. And even if it got a hit, it possibly wouldn't have killed it anyway. The point of this being, if you're on the defense in a scenario, or you want to set up your tanks in defensive positions, look for walls, because you can put them behind a wall in a hull down position, and it's a huge advantage against any other tanks that are approaching or trying to fire at you. Okay, let's move on to the next topic. Okay, in this video, I'm going to talk about the effects of range on your two hit chance and actually your two kill chance. Uh, range can affect armor penetration depending on the type of uh, gun you're using, the barrel length, whether it's short, regular, long, or extra long, and the type of ammo you're using. Here we have a bunch of Shermans basically pointing off at a bunch of Panzer IVs at various ranges. Now let me show you how the ranges work in second front based on advanced squad leader. There are multiple different uh, ranges that you can fire from and they affect the, your two hit chance for every six hexes you are away from uh, the target. So uh, if you're at zero to six, I don't think zero exists in second run. I don't think you can be in the same hex. There's no Things, enemy units can't, other than close combat, they can't drive through one another and that sort of, there's no overruns or anything. So basically one to six, these are the two hit numbers uh, if you're shooting at a vehicle. Zero to six, one to six, seven to 12, 13 to 18, 19 to 24, etc. Every six hexes, your chance to hit drops and it starts getting quite low after that. And then there are modifiers to the two-hit chance um, based on the type of weapon. A star weapon, that means short barrel. Uh, L weapon means long. LL means extra long in second front. If, you, if there's neither of those three, it's just a regular barrel and there's no modifier. And you can see uh, short barrel guns, there's a minus one modifier. It drops the two-hit number by one. It's harder to hit. And with long barrel, especially extra long barrels, it increases your chances at longer ranges. So you shoot at long range, the drop off of your chance to hit uh, is reduced by these modifiers. Okay. Same with the two kill. If you hit something up close, penetration, uh, you get a bonus to penetration. If you hit something from further away, the uh, shell loses energy as it travels, and your chance for penetration uh, goes down, and your chance for a kill goes down. Let's jump to second front and see how that works. So here we have basically two things adjacent. Barring any other modifiers for terrain or moving, I'm going to blast the heck out of this thing. 98% chance uh, because I'm in a uh, firing adjacent. There's a modifier for that, and there is a modifier for... Uh, point blank penetration eight so 81 percent and 58 percent let's back it out one hex and see what these look like let's see if the 81 and 58 drop two hexes away yep goes from 68 to 42 so we're not point blank we're still close still a good chance to kill we're still going to hit uh but we're at two hex range after two hexes you the first one hex away and two hexes away is when you get that uh, closeness bonus. After that, it goes away. So if you want to ensure a kill and you think it's safe, get in close and you're going to get a bonus to hit and to possibly penetration. Now let's move on to six hexes. The two kill 
or the penetration chances are 68 and 42. Let's fire this guy. Still at 68, 42. Doesn't drop off. The two hit drops off a little bit. The optimal range for firing is 0 to 6. Your chance of hitting a vehicle, again, pending any other modifiers, is a 10 and 12. You know, rolling a 10 or less on two six-sided dice, very good chance. And after that, it starts dropping off uh, fairly quickly, unless you have a long barrel gun. Uh, let's move out to 12 hexes here. Let's see, penetration was 68, 42. Here, still the same. Doesn't drop off yet. The two hit drops down to 83%. Still a good chance to uh, hit it. Again, nothing's moving or any uh, hindrances or anything. Let's move out to... I did get a little tricky here with angles. Let's move out to 17, 18 hexes. 72% chance, still no penetration loss, 68%, 42%. But let's move out beyond 18 hexes. So we get into that next, you know, 17 to, what was it, 17 to, sorry, 19 to 24. Let's move into there. Let's fire this guy here. We're at 21 hexes. You can see there's like a 50-50 chance to hit, but the penetration, we start losing armor penetration at this point, goes down to 58% and 29% in this uh, uh, effect due to, due to range. Okay, So basically the message here is, if you're going to fire, fire as close as possible to get the bonus for two hit, for one to two hex range and penetration. And don't fire at anything probably beyond uh, the 18 hex range. 19 and above, you start losing uh, penetration, armor penetration effectiveness. So the real sweet spot for most gameplay is going to be 12 hexes or less. And 1 to 6 hexes is the optimal. Um, you have a good chance of getting hits at those uh, ranges. And obviously, if you're going to fire, fire at a side or rear at 1 to 12 or 1 to 6 hex range in uh, second front and advanced squad leader. Okay, let's move on to topic number whatever the next one is. All right, let's talk about unarmored vehicles. There are quite a few unarmored vehicles. Not too many in scenarios are mainly used uh, as transport. You have trucks and uh, jeeps. Um, there are no motorcycles in the game, um, but anything that has no, let me highlight one of these trucks, has no shields on its uh, card is an unarmored target. Now you have to be really careful with unarmored targets because they can be blown up by anything, even a, a half squad, even a crew with no machine gun. Firing two firepower. Chances are slim, but it can happen. They are susceptible to any type of fire, including small arms uh, attacks from squads. Um, which makes sense because anything can take out a vehicle. You could blow the tires out. You could hit the engine block. Uh, hit the fuel tank. Uh, hit the driver that's driving the thing. Anything can take it out. Uh, my recommendation when you're using... Playing a scenario uh, with unarmored targets, transports, keep them out of the line of fire because they they will be destroyed very easily. Um, and then what happens when they are destroyed is the passengers um, have to pass a crew survival check, and uh, which is vehicle dependent. It's usually around a six on two two six-sided dice they have to roll a six or less if the if the transport is destroyed and they survive but that's only if the vehicle isn't turned into a burning wreck which can happen quite often um, let me show you the actual mechanics of how it works in asl here is the infantry fire table and the way it works in asl is any vehicle that's unarmored um, is symbolized with a star on its counter instead of an armor value it has stars which means no armor and 
to kill it, all you have to do is um, put some kind of fire to bear on it. Um, for a small arms attack using the infantry fire table, if I fired on it with eight firepower, this number in this row represents the number I have to roll uh, less than or equal to destroy the vehicle. So if I fire on it with eight firepower, I have to roll a seven or less and it's destroyed. That's it. Now, you, don't, you don't have to hit it. You just have to fire at it. Say I'm firing at it and you have to roll a seven or less and it's blown up. Um, now, if you roll, in this case, if you rolled a seven, it would be immobilized. If you rolled a six or less, it would be destroyed. If you rolled a uh, three or less, it would turn into a burning wreck and the passengers would be eliminated as well. So the mechanics for um, destroying unarmored vehicles are very easy. If you fire HE at it, um, it's a little easier kill. If you fire AP at it, both of those have to go through the two-hit process if you're firing a gun or a, or, a, or a vehicle with a gun mounted on it, like an AFV. They have to hit it, obviously. AP, not as good as killing a unarmored target as HE, which makes sense as well. An HE round can potentially kill it, but it could actually potentially just go through it and, and miss everything and just kind of damage it. HE, it blows up near it or hits it. It's going to destroy it much more easier than an AP round. Um, but that's the least of your worries because there's usually way more small arms fire on the battlefield than there is uh, AFVs roaming around and a simple squad can take out a squad with a leader a squad with a machine gun can take it out which I'm going to show you how easy it is to take out a unarmored vehicle vehicle here we have two trucks two German Opel Blitzes loaded uh, each one has a squad and I have some Russians over here in my little playground. I have a leader with a squad of medium machine gun here and some units back here. And I'm just going to do something that you would never want to do in the battlefield in second front or ASL is drive a loaded truck right into the line of fire, even of small arms fire, because I'm going to show you what happens. All right, you ready? Let's drive this Opal Blitz up the road. And trucks normally want to state of the roads anyway, because going off road costs them significantly more movement points going through anything other than a road hex. Let's drive up the road and see what happens to these guys. Oh, they get fired on immediately. Truck was destroyed. Um, and the passengers survived. Let me put up the graphic for the ASL version of the Opal Blitz right over there and we can kind of compare. And then let's look over to the left here. So the chance of destroying the truck itself was 42% and the chance of getting an effect on the Passengers um, is 21% for a pin, 8% KIA, etc. Um, they survived the destruction of the truck and they survived any of the uh, fire as well. Um, machine gun is fire. Machine gun has rate of fire. Now, I would not, what I would do is probably drive behind the tr tree here and unload. But I'm a glutton for punishment. I'm going to drive this guy up the road and see what happens to him as well. They get fired on as well. They survive. I'm going to keep going. Going to get fired on again. Yep, right there. They survive. And that truck made it through. But you can see how easy it is for a truck to be eliminated um, by small arms fire. Luckily enough, the crew, sorry, the passengers managed to survive. Now, the flip side of this works as well. Um, your units can fire on uh, trucks using small arms fire just as effectively and efficiently, but you may find that the AI may is going to be really frugal with moving its unarmored vehicles within your uh, fire. In fact, I've seen them unload passengers quite a ways behind the line, um, the battle line, and then they'll move, the AI will move the vehicles, the armored vehicles, way to the rear, way out of your line of sight. There was no chance for you to kill them and possibly get uh, some victory points, which would count towards uh, scenario victory or defeat. So on the battlefield, be very careful of using your unarmored vehicles. Conversely, 
be cognizant of how to destroy unarmored vehicles with their small arms fire.